way up. I'm going to stop this share. Boom, boom, boom. Look at, look at these lovely people we have on today. Look at that. So what is going on, everybody? My name is John Moreau, and I am the Sync Conversion Specialist. Um, I actually tried to get everybody's video up, but I don't know what happened with our Zoom. But for the next conversion call that we're going to be doing, uh, which we'll give you guys a little um, insight here shortly, we're going to be doing some video uh, for everybody to be on video and get really engaged. So today we'll rock and roll with this. Uh, but what is going on? I got some good people with me today. I got Matt Feathers and Caleb Priest. What's going on, guys? How are you doing? Hey, John. How are you? I am amazing. Kayla, how are you? I'm so good here in Atlanta. The weather is perfect today, like so good. So it's killing me to be inside, but I'm really excited to be on the call with everybody. Well, I promise you after this hour, you can go ahead and you can hang out outside. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Which are, are granted. Um, so this call, uh, if everybody kind of understands, we're supposed to have a conversion day as well as a sync to you in um, Toronto, was it? That's right. That's right. We and were, so, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, John. Yeah. And, and, and Matt was going to be there doing a conversion day for me because I had some things I had to take care of. Um, but unfortunately, there's uh, some things going on that are outside of our control. Um, so we decided to bring conversion day to everybody that was supposed to be there, plus throw it up to everybody that was um, interested in, in going ahead and having a conversion call today. Um, so Matt, I want to go ahead and kind of bring you aboard and uh, let them know what to expect today um, and then kind of uh, tell them a little bit about who you are in case they're not familiar with you. Yeah, I saw and I saw the chat box there. I, I saw people was like California, Florida, Texas checking in. I was hoping some folks from Canada might say, hey. And, uh, and say today. hello. If, if you are in Canada, yeah, I'd like to see some folks check in from Canada. But uh, yeah, we, we were supposed to be in Canada this week. Oh, there they are. Now they're popping up. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> there we go. Um, we were supposed to be with you guys this week. And um, as everybody knows, there's things that are going on, like John said, that are outside of our control. And um, we're coming back. That's I just want to say we're coming back. Just as soon as we can get there, we've... Uh, We've kind of been in the uh, in the uh, the chat rooms of our sync teams, you know, just talking through things, contingency plans. Uh, we want to get to you, all of you guys, as quick as we can, and we're committed to coming back uh, for a sync to you up in Toronto. I think it's we're shooting for May and uh, May twenty seventh, twenty eighth. Fingers crossed. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Uh, looking forward to that. Um, but again, th and thank you, John, for the intro. My my name is Matt Feathers. I am a real estate agent, team leader in Nashville, Tennessee, also do some training for the SYNC team, been using SYNC since, goodness, like 2014. Uh, so I am a practitioner, also a trainer, um, and again, run a small team here in Nashville, uh, just on the front lines, all in the same boat, just like all you guys are, and super, super pumped to be on this call. Awesome, brother. And I appreciate you uh, jumping on. I know, uh, just let you guys know, Matt told me a funny little story. Um, tell a quick little story about your son. Oh, so he's uh, really struggling right now with uh, the social distancing thing. So my, yesterday I was in my office and my, uh, my neighbor, <laughs> my neighbor sent me a picture of him through the window. So my, my kid had gotten out of my, he's four, he'd gotten out of my house, went to my neighbor's house and was peeking in their window. <laughs> and he, he was like, Hey man, you might want to come get your kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so guys, you know, normally we do our calls on every other Monday and, and we had one this past Monday. So I don't want to reiterate too much of what we went into on Monday. Um, I kind of want to start fresh and start uh, really from, from where we're at right now. Um, and, and the one thing I do want to talk about is always talk about a mindset shift, right? And, you know, skill set is one thing when it comes to conversion, but I can't shape, and, and Matt can, and Kayla can. We cannot shape your, your skill set unless first we kind of rewire your mindset. So please have your pens and paper ready because what we go over today, uh, I want you to be engaged, and that's why we're going to start doing video as well uh, for you guys to jump on a video. Uh, but I want you guys to implement the information. And, I, and I'll start off by saying what you perceive is what you receive. right? What you perceive is what you receive, and we need to have this little bit of a perspective shift. I totally get it right now. The world that we're living in um, is pretty uncertain, right? It, it's, it's uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen. We're hoping for the best. Um, and, and with it all being uncertain, that's also the way we look at it, right? So if we know it's uncertain, we need to take our attention off of that and put it towards a thing that we can make certain, 
And then repeat that. So take our mind and our focus off the things that are uncertain that we can't have control over and put it into what we do have control over and create certainty that way. Because certainty is a human need that we all have. And so the way to shift that and create this new certainty is to understand, A, we're not all going to implode and like this whole entire universe is going to go away. Like, it's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is maybe in two weeks, everything's going to get better. Maybe in six months. I don't know the number, but I know that the people that are doing the work today and the people that are going to do the work tomorrow and stay push and stay grinding, maximize these minutes are going to be the people that when this does all end and the fog clears, they're going to be light years ahead of everybody else. And I'm urging every single person on this call to be the person in their market that sets them up for, for extreme leverage and sets them up for extreme uh, success when this is all said and done. I don't want you trying to backtrack right now and taking your foot off the gas pedal. Look, you're in this, right? Like, like this is, we're all in this together. Um, but this industry, it's not going to go anywhere. And I actually looked at it and it's funny. Uh, they say that three of the last five recessions the actual home prices have went up three of the last five, you know, 2008 obviously was the craziest one and went like 16% down, but three of the last five. And so I don't know what's going to go in the home market, but I know that you can control one thing and that's your perspective. And then the other thing you control is the actions you take, but you cannot take the right actions intentionally unless you change and shift that perspective into things that are going to help you. So the outside circumstances, you're not in control of that. Right? You cannot choose those things, but what you can choose is our thoughts and the way we look at it, and indirectly, that will shape our life. So everything we give you today, guys, we get it. It's a little bit harder, a little bit different than normal, but everything we're giving you today is going to be applicable today, not when things clear up. It's going to be applicable today. And so that's where I want to start with that. And, and Matt, we talked about five things that can help them increase their conversion. Um, you know, I got a list of 12 things but I want to kind of funnel it down and I want to give them some real tools that they could implement immediately to be better in their business today than they were yesterday. So um, we chatted a little bit about that. What do you feel? One of the biggest things is like, let's just say like not the number one thing, but one of the top five things um, in order to right now take their conversion in their business to another level. Well, I'll just first and foremost, I would say my mindset, you know, it, we have to really, really be clear on the fact that there are so many things going on right now that are outside of our control. You said it very well. A lot of uncertainty, a lot of fear, you know, but we still have a job to do, you know, and, and we're here to, to help folks and to help people. So, I mean, for me, it's like realizing that there's a lot going on stock market. Um, there's a, a virus. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on that I, I really can't control. You know, so I, I want to stick to my daily habits and kind of think about the things that I can do and that I can control um, day in and day out, uh, regardless of what's going on externally. And and some of those things right now are, are very real estate related. You know, we talk about um, just sticking to your time blocking, sticking to your calendar. Um, and right now is a great time. Think about the amount of people like in Tennessee where I'm at. There's a stay at home order. OK. So we know more people are at home. There's some states where there's a mandatory, don't leave your house. We know people are at home. So like, what a great time to make some dials, right? To get on the phones. Um, but if you live in that kind of paralysis mindset, or there's like a lot of fear or uncertainty, you'll never even get that far. So, yeah. I mean, for me, it's, it's kind of just still the fundamentals, but maybe even, you know, 10 Xing those fundamentals, you know? Yeah. So where if I was making $50 a day, now I need to make a hundred, you know? Yep. And that's what you said yesterday. We were on a call and you're like, Hey man, what we need to be telling everybody is if your normal standard is a hundred, let's make it 200. Uh, and, and, and we're going to talk about how to maximize those calls here in a second. Uh, but yeah. So the first step is, is your, your mindset, not motivation necessarily, right? Cause motivation is very temporary guys. Um, it's what you do when you're not motivated that creates your destiny. So he's not talking about, motivation. Yeah, we all need that, right? We need the inspiration, but it's, it's that mindset of how we look at things and how we act. And the biggest thing he said is, is there's a lot of fear and I want everybody to start walking in faith because when you walk in fear, you cannot create and you definitely cannot see opportunities that are in front of you. That is a fact. 
because what you focus on expands when, when you're thinking about fear, thinking about, oh my God, what's going to happen? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? You will attract more of the things that bring fear into your life. So guys, if you're with me and you want to start walking in faith, we have a lot of people on this call. Let's put it into the uh, chat box right now. If you're ready to walk in faith, let me see you say yes right there in that chat box. Let's get everybody aboard here. Uh, you know, one team, one mission. You know what I mean? This is, this is what it's all about, guys. Um, we know a lot of people that are losing their jobs and, and things of that nature. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's scary, but at the same time, we could bring some light and some happiness into some people. So science backed by faith. Yes. Let's go. Let's grow. Let's do it. I love it. So now, now that we're aboard, we got the mindset ready to go. Um, yeah, I don't, John. Yeah, John, I don't even yeah. want to downplay like the, especially the seriousness of this, you know, it's, 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 it's very real, you know? Yeah. Um, and I don't even really, cause I've had the conversations now with people that are, are back on the fence because of this and they're looking at it and we might perceive it as an objection, but I'm not even looking at it that way. It's, it's, you know, it's very real. It's physical, it's emotional. But what I'm seeing is, is that people want to talk to somebody, you know, they're, they're right now, they're maybe a little more vulnerable and they want to dig, they, they are allowing us to dig deep. So, I mean, it's just a, it's a, it's a great, it's a great time. It's a great time to, to really uh, step up, you know, and commit and help some folks. Yeah. And you know, he talks about it. There's, there's not an objection. This is an obstacle guys, what we're dealing with, but with every obstacle comes great opportunity. Within every great obstacle comes great opportunity, but it's up to you to find it. It's not just going to happen and walk in that faith that we talked about will help. Um, he also mentioned something else, which then we'll get into the number two is like your, your morning habits, your, 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 your rituals, your rituals. It is hard right now for us guys. Let's be real. It is hard for us to like wake up like we used to wake up, get on to the routine that we had. Right. And so now is the time to stay extremely sharp. This is when you need to stay super sharp. If you don't have a gym, start working out at home. If you normally get up at 5.30, but you know what? You don't really need to anymore because you're not getting into an office setting. Wake up at 5.30. It means so much more now. So much more now than it did before. Because if you talk about innovating like we want to, we want to innovate in this kind of time, you can't innovate if you're not sharp. And you're not sharp unless you're sticking to those daily habits. Okay? So make sure those daily habits, those daily routines are where it's at. And I'll give you one little tip. When I first started working from home years ago, I had trouble, right? Like I would always like kind of walk into my office at whatever time, put on, uh, you know, my pajama pants and just kind of go to work. What I realized I wasn't being as effective or efficient as I, as I could be. A mentor of mine says, get up, get dressed and take the car around the block. I'm like, what? He goes, just do it. Like the normal time you usually go into your office, just get dressed. Like you're going to go into your office and drive around a block a few times, come back and get to work. And I'm telling you, it made a world of a difference. Now I don't need that. I'm um, fortunate enough to have built a, a callous mind and, and create those habits that are uh, pretty strict in my world. Uh, but just a little tip for you guys, if you're struggling with getting that you know, morning juices going, uh, act as if you're going to the office, drive a quick little uh, you know, two-mile radius and come right back and then go ahead and start getting on your dials. So Matt, what do you think number two is, man? Like, it, it, you know, if we're looking at a, the top five or, or five big things and uh, big ingredients to drive these people conversion rate up, what, what would you say it would be? Yeah. And just to back up a little bit too, cause I mean, we're working from home is very real right now, but you've got to keep those call blocks, those time blocks sacred. Mm. And I think it's important too, to have your, like the people that live in your home, your family on board with that as well. And kind of understand like, this is what, this is what mommy or daddy or whoever is doing right now, you know, and, and it's important to, to our livelihood. So it, it's about keeping those, those time frames sacred. And then having everybody else around you on board with that too. Because when you're home, like we are now, a lot of us are now, it's really easy to, to step out or be distracted. So I, I'm glad you brought that up, brought that up, John. But just to kind of get into another thing Wait, that I think- No, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to number two yet. Because <laughs> I, I would like to know what you feel a strong time block is. I think a lot of people have a misconception of time blocking and time management um, and how long they could truly jump on the phones for without being distracted. What do you feel from, uh, you know, the years of you doing it as well as, you know, I know that you're a big learner as well and a big reader. Um, so what do you feel is a good time block schedule that they could implement tomorrow? So normal circumstances, I, I love like eight to 9 a.m. for prospecting and then like four to five or four to six for my second time frame of, of prospecting. And I'll do all my nurturing or appoint, appointments in between. So I just kind of break it down into thirds. Now, what we talked about, like considering the amount of folks that are home right now, I'm kind of just putting that to the side 
and I'm getting on the phone. I mean, I'm, I'm picking up my database and turning it upside down and shaking it. I'm looking at, I mean, we've got our save filters. The sync folks are here. They know what those are. Um, I'm going beyond that. You know, I'm looking at last login, 30 to 60, 60 to 90, 90 to 120. I'm just, I'm seeing what's out there because I know that my chance to catch these folks on the phone is a lot better. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just your, 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 your 10 X and your production. Um, you also said though relationships, like have that conversation. I think that's huge. Don't miss, mm -hmm. don't miss that guys. Like if, if you're working a little bit more from home or like, you know, that you need to like not be distracted, have the conversation prior with your partner and let them know, Hey, I'm going to be on the phone for 90 minutes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and be on the phone for two hours and working on this project, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Cause a lot of times we have, uh, fights with our spouses or our partners because we didn't set the expectation prior to let them know, Hey, for 90 minutes, I'm going to be grinding. Then they come in and they interrupt you. Then you kind of get a little bit uh, snippy or reactive to them coming in when they had no clue. So just have that uh, conversation with whoever is in your home uh, so that you don't cause any friction long-term. But uh, yeah, that's, that's a huge one. What do, all right. So let's jump to number two here. What do you feel um, is another big tool for these guys and gals to get their conversion during this time, during the pandemic uh, to the next level? Well, this, I would say like motivation and mindset is obviously 1A, but 1A, 1B, I'm sorry, is undoubtedly the, the opening line, mm. you know, w without a doubt. Just getting, when you're on the phone with folks and you're prospecting, it all starts right there. And just to back it up a little bit in advance of that, um, we can talk a little bit about tonality. I mean, that's yeah. the most, you know, the most important tool in any conversation, without a doubt, is, is tonality then it's the words you say, right? So when we're getting these folks on the phone um, and considering all that's going on in the world right now, I think it's important for us to um, exude some positivity, right? So when, when we're talking, like I see you smiling right now and when I'm talking right now, you kind of feel me smiling, right? I mean, it's very real stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's why like tonality for me, um, especially, you know, piggyback that onto the, uh, the opening line, I mean, it's got to be, it's got to be crushed. It's got to be perfect. Yeah. And, and so let's talk about tonality. Then we'll jump into opening line guys. Tonality can only happen, right? Can only really truly create an, an, an optimal tonality um, and, and have control over it when you do a few things. And number one is making sure that your feet are on the ground. I would ideally like you to stand up because then you can get into the certain state because feet need to be on the ground and posture needs to be up. And tonality creates such engagement. Tonality creates such empathy towards whomever it is you're speaking to when they speak about that pain or pleasure. Tonality creates the, this, this connection, right? And, and when you utilize it in a proper spaces, you're able to take your conversations to the, the, the ultimate level that you could ever think you'd get them to because you're showing an extreme amount of energy without being high energy. Right? I'm a very high energy person. Most people know that, right? Like I'm, I'm very high energy, but I could be extremely high energy without even utilizing like my facial expressions or anything just through tonality, but it would not be able to happen unless I stood up, unless I got into my peak state, which you guys all should find out what that is for you, whether it's screaming, jumping up or down, dancing, you need to win the battle before it starts, right? You need to win the game before it starts. Look at any champion, Look at any champion. Look at any great actor. Look at any amazing musician. Tell me right now, if they did not prep the way that they prepped, would they be where they're at? Absolutely not. Champions don't become champions by stepping on the field and playing that one day. They step on the field every single day and they prepare better than anybody. Are you preparing for your calls every day like it's a championship game? Or are you preparing like it's preseason? I repeat that. Are you preparing every single day, every day, like it's the championship? Or are you preparing some days like it's preseason and it doesn't matter? And so that tonality can come from just your preparation. So make sure you have it. Make sure you utilize it. I always say stand up when you make your dials. Uh, and, and don't look at the lead's notes before you dial. You can do it while you're dialing, but you don't want to have this assumption of like who they are, what they want, anything like that, because it will drive you to a negative response nine times out of 10. And you won't ask the right questions. Also, you can't get into flow state. I cannot get into flow state if I'm thinking too much. And flow state is simply when a front and a back 
signals of your brain shut off and you are just crushing it, right? I mean, musicians, like I, I talked about on the last call, I was in a band for a long time and some of our best music came when we were just jamming out. And, and, and I'm sure Matt, you can attest to this and everybody else on this call, when there's a call one time, at least once in your life, where you call this, this prospect and you crushed every objection. I mean, you were just boom, boom, boom. And you got the appointment. Well, next week, the same objections came your way, yet you could not overcome them. Well, that was because you didn't understand that you were in flow state. And so how do we capture that flow state and create a process around it to duplicate? And it's simple. Just create that sales journal. And so if you're not having a great tonality, you got to write down in your sales journal, my tonality wasn't, wasn't the greatest during this time. Right? I got distracted, so my tonality wasn't good. That's another one. If you were distracted on a phone call, you will not be able to have great tonality. Be engaged in the moment and now is the best time to do that because it, it, to be intentionally listening, it's not often people do that nowadays. Um, and, and so I would master the craft of intentionally listening because when you do that, then the true tonality can come out because you could hear, you could understand um, and, and you're truly engaged in the conversation. So let, let, let's talk about the opening line. Someone said, what do you do right now? Is it different now? than it was you know, two months ago before the pandemic started. And I want Matt, you to answer this because you've been dialing, like you've been up. Yeah, up your that's a great, I saw that in the chat box. It's a great question. Um, my only apprehension there is, is um, if I change my opening line to kind of reflect what's going on um, right now, it's almost like we are kind of digging ourselves a, a little bit of a hole right at the start. You know, it's like we're, now, I, I definitely want to empathize with folks. I think it's very important right now. And I'm going to get there. But I, right now, I mean, I'm not, I'm not changing my opening line. I'm, it, we know it works. You know, I mean, con conversion days, hundreds of probably we're thousands of appointments now. Yeah. Um, I think last conversion day in Atlanta, we did 88 appointments in an hour, hour, 15 minutes. I'm not going to, you know, break away with, with what works. Yeah. And, and. That's, that's the, the, the big thing is just staying consistent. Uh, consistency will win. So our opening line looks like this. For those of you who are unaware of it, um, it's just, hey, this is John with the home search site. Sorry, you're taking a look at some homes over in Dallas. Just curious, you're looking at making a move in the next three to six months, or are you just browsing? Ah, I'm just browsing right now. Perfect. Exactly what the site is for. While I have you, what's <clears> prompting <throat> you to browse? Right? And then when they actually answer that they're going to answer it probably a little bit better than they've ever answered it before because you brought their wall down by saying are you just browsing people have the fear of disappointment and it stems from the fear of getting rejected and when you bring that wall down they could then be a little bit more vulnerable with you now let's just say they're still like man i don't know i'm just still looking matt okay perfect obviously, you know <laughs> obviously that's exactly what we had the site there for but let me ask you this would it be like a three or four bedrooms It'll probably be like four bedrooms. Interesting. Why four bedrooms? And I'm jumping right back onto the train, right? I'm bringing it right back onto the tracks. Do not, this is, this is huge. Do not allow, do not allow their fear to dictate your income. Do not allow their fear to dictate your income because that is what's happening. Then their fear goes into your own fear, right? Oh, they don't want to talk to me during this time. They don't want to talk to me during this time. And then you build up this false belief. And so that opening line still works. What I would definitely do though is, is you know, let's, let's kind of role play here, Matt, because maybe you've had this happen. So mm -hmm. I do the opening line, right? And then I tell you, yeah, I'm just, I'm just browsing right now. And then, I'm, you know, I don't, with everything going on, Matt, I just, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to go ahead and, and buy anytime soon because I'm just waiting for this whole thing to kind of, you know, blow over. Sure. I, I totally get that. I mean, I totally get it, John, but let me, let me just ask you this. I mean, what, if this wasn't going on right now, I mean, what, what would the perfect place look like for you? Boom. I love it. Right. Did you hear what he just said? No, totally, I totally understand. Totally get that. Like, no, I'm, I'm, I respect that. But you know, if, if this wasn't going on, what, what would it look like? Would it be three or four bedrooms? And then you could have some fun with them a little bit. You know what I mean? Hey, look, you, <laughs> Uh, you know, if you're checking a lot of emails lately and, and, uh, you want to make sure you're checking emails with the right property alerts, I don't want to send you anything that's going to clutter your inbox. So I want to make sure I'm sending you the right stuff, but essentially all I'm trying to do is get back onto the what questions that dive deeper into the why. 
Sure. All right. Into the what? And in order to dive deeper into the why. A few things you don't want to do on your opening line. Make sure you guys write these down. Stop asking or saying, hey, I saw you registered on my site. Hey, I saw you signed up on my site. Signed up and registered. Eliminate those things from your vocabulary. Right? Eliminate those from your vocabulary. Because that right there is an easy, easy opportunity for them to say, register, I didn't register for anything. I didn't sign up for anything. And now you're already starting off on a wrong foot. Another thing, and this one is probably right now is like better than ever not to say it's, hey, how are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? Now, if you know the person, you have to follow up, you've engaged, totally different story. We're talking about new buyer internet leads right now. How are you? It's a 50-50 chance on a normal day that's going to be negative or positive. What we're looking at today is probably like a 75-25, 75 being negative. So let's eliminate it. And everything we're telling you guys here is think about this. If me, Kayla, and Matt were your, your leaders and we're going to war, right? And we're going to war, we're hiding behind a bunker, and then all of a sudden I see a bomb. I'm like, hey, Nate, that's a bomb right there. I don't know if it's going to blow up, but it might. It's a 50-50 chance. Like, Nate, are you going to go ahead and step on that bomb? All right? No. Nathan's going to be like, no. Why? Why would I? It's a 50-50 chance. Everything we're giving you is a 50-50 chance it could blow up. We're trying to give you the small hinges that swing open big doors. Small hinges swing open big doors. Another thing I hear a lot of is in your opening line, uh, you talk about your brokerage name. Hey, this is ABC Realty. There's so many cons with that. And number one con is, what if they had a bad experience at ABC Realty? Okay, maybe their friend had a bad experience. Right? Maybe um, they know somebody that they don't like that used ABC Realty. Maybe they just don't like your sign and it's ugly and or they don't like the colors. It just doesn't match and vibe with them. There are so many possibilities for them not to want to work with ABC Realty versus first understanding who you are and how you could add value versus just the company. Uh, so that's the other one. And then another big one that Matt, I'll let you kind of see if there's anything else is I hear this a lot where people are like, Hey, I just want to see if there's anything I could do for you. Leaving that open ended of a question. Hear me out guys. And this means like, I'm not dis being disrespectful, but they don't know you. So they don't think that you could help them, right? Like they think that you are a used car salesman. That's unfortunately what they think of real estate agents, right? Little do they know the truth. They do not know you. So when you say, if there's anything I could do for you, why would they say, yes, you could do something for me if they don't know you and they don't think that you have value, right? They don't think you could create a solution for their problem. So they're not going to tell you they can just keep sending me stuff, but I see something and I'll let you know. This is usually how it goes. Right. So just eliminate that as well. You have anything else, Matt, like not what not to say or any key uh, components of the opening line? Yeah, definitely stay away from their name. Um, their name's not important. Could be wrong. Could be male, female. We don't know, you know, so it's not not important. It's just a like John said, it's a landmine. So we're going to stay away from that. And then to uh, the website name, our web uh, people are on multiple sites that we hear average six to seven, I think is what I've heard six to seven different sites. So if they ask what site that you're from, say their, their favorite site, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. I do use their favorite city sometimes in the opening line. So, you know, the, yeah. the, the Franklin home search or the Hendersonville home search, I will do that just to kind of, you know, promote some relevancy. Um, Cause they could be looking at multiple cities. They could be relocating. We, you know, we don't know, but uh, definitely, yeah, avoid their name and then avoid the, uh, the website name. Yeah, hey, and, and so I, even um, that's saying is throw when you a question say, to you guys from the chat. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah sure. one second, and then I'm, I'm gonna jump into it so I don't lose my thought because it probably will bounce yeah. around. So you said like the Franklin Home Search, and just yeah. a little small iteration of like instead of saying Franklin Home Search site, just be like, hey, you know, this is Matt with a home search site. I saw you taking a look at some homes in Franklin. In Franklin, perfect. Versus Franklin Home Search site because they're like, no, I don't want to. No, I don't want to move to Franklin. Oh, interesting. Okay, where were you looking then? And that gives you another opportunity to, to create uh, a possible, you know, uh, opportunity to build a uh, report. Kayla, go ahead. Um, what about abrupt people that just cut you off and say, I'll contact you and I need you. 
Matt, I could definitely go on and, and uh, talk about that, but do you have any suggestions you want me to take? I learn. I learned from you. I just say next. <laughs> that's it, right? So, so the first thing you have to realize, whoever wrote that, is more than likely that's happening because your opening line isn't what it needs to be. 70% of our objections are coming because our opening line is not mastered. Now, this may be coming three, uh, three minutes, five minutes later, but a lot of your objections come because your opening line isn't what it needs to be. And that's the first place I'd start. If I could isolate that not being an objection by fixing the real objection, the real problem, which is your opening line, possibly, I would do that first. I would work on that opening line, which is once again, hey, this is John with the home search site. So I would take a look at, look at some homes, not houses, look at some homes over in the Dallas area. Just curious, looking to make a move in the next three to six months, or you're just browsing. I'm just browsing. So that right there will help alleviate a lot of the, uh, the issues. But if they're still pissed off, they, I'll let you know when I need you. Say, oh, okay, you could definitely let me know. I'm sending you some emails right now, Matt. I don't want to, you know, clutter your inbox. So I can send you the right stuff. Just tell me real quick, what are you looking for? Like three or four bedrooms? I don't know, uh, four bedrooms. Okay, interesting. While well, I put that in there, why is four bedrooms important to you? Like I'm just, I'm still trying to go. Now, if they're like, dude, like stop calling me. Like, and they're just like completely rude. I utilize next, right? Next. No just means next opportunity. And so I stand up and I'm not going to scream in anybody's ears right now. Those listen like on earbuds and I scream next and I go into the next one because I look at a no through a different lens. Now you're going to have people that are pissed at you. And that, that's, that's a part of the game. That's a part of real estate. This is a contact sport. Like if you're not ready to go in there and get into some, some, sometimes some battles with some people that, you know, don't want to talk to you. If you're not willing to do that. You're not going to be able to get to the people that truly want to talk to you and truly need your help. But you have to sh go ahead and, and, and sometimes fight and claw your way through the disgruntled people like that. But you can't let it affect you into the next call. Yeah, John, you mentioned using your sales journal. And I think it's a good, in an instance like that, I might jot down a few notes of what did or didn't work. Yeah. You know, and when I reevaluate those instances, um, and I used to take that kind of stuff personal um, until I started making more dials and realized it's a numbers game. Yep. But I'm with you, man. I don't, I don't like giving up that easy. Um, I just challenge myself the next time to ask better questions, use better tonality. Yeah. Um, that's, that's really what it comes down to. And, and it's, it's, an, it's a numbers game, right? Uh, but, and you know your numbers. You know how many no's you got to get you know, in order to get to a yes. Uh, but, but it's also just a part of this process, guys. Like it's a part of the process. You are in sales, like you are in sales and you have to understand that when you call people, their fear is going to spew out their mouth and their fear comes out as what you call objections. Their fear comes out as objections. So we have to go ahead and, and isolate that and, and realize what the real objection is. And then go ahead and, and have a conversation around that to add true value. Um, so that's, that was what, is that two? Is that number two? Yeah. Like two A, two B. Uh, okay. So let's, let's talk about a third one. Let's talk about uh, number three. What would be another key component, key ingredient to somebody's success? Um, actually, you know what, before we jump in there, let's stay in opening lines. Does anybody have any questions on the opening line real quick? Maybe Kayla, you can jump in and, and let me know before we move on to the next, next thing. Um, for opening line, we don't have any real specific questions, just some questions about, you know, do we say um, our actual site name, which we clarified no, we're just saying home search site, because when we say the URL, they're going to say, well, I've never heard of that site, even though we know they have. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have some people that have, you know, had some suggestions of things that they also do. So maybe you want to speak to that a little bit. Um, where they say, Hey name, how's it going? How do you feel about that one? It, it, so they said two things that aren't what I preach now, mind you guys, it's not like I'm like better than everybody. And I know all the answers by all means, the furthest thing from that. And those of you who know me know that that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that we know what works after 5,000 agents in three years of doing this course and making the small tweaks along the way, 33% guys. So from contact to appointment set, we have a 33% uh, conversion rate, 5,000 agents. So that doesn't lie. So the, the, hey, name, name, 
eliminate it. Matt said before, it could be a guy, it could be a girl. It, it, it could be, um, it could be the wrong be man. them, right? It, or, yeah. okay, I'm going to be honest. If I ever got a bill collector call me, like, hey, John, this is da da da. My first excuse is, this isn't John. Every time, every time. Now, I may be, you know, the only one that does that, but I don't think I am. And so that's another reason. And then how's it going? Oh, it's going real shitty. I'm quarantined right now with 18 kids. <laughs> like, that's so, we don't want to do that, right? Like, it's going real bad. I ran out of toilet paper. Like, you don't want to ask that question that could possibly create, say, uh, a negative response. Um, what else we got in there, Kayla? Hopefully that helped. And, and uh, you, why not say their name, Pat? Hopefully that helped uh, clarify that. Uh, a lot of stuff we're getting is now kind of more about objections. So I think we'll probably be able to touch on a lot of this in your next piece. Yeah. And so Matt, you want to uh, talk about number three for a second? Yeah, we can. You want to do objections or do you want to talk a little bit more about digging, uh, digging deep, like with three Y's deep? Yeah, let's, let's definitely talk about number three, which would be uh, three Y's deep, because this comes back into the objections. You know, yeah. I think a lot of us are grabbing objections because they don't see value. You know, if I'm talking to Matt right now and I'm just having a good conversation with him and I'm building rapport and I'm hearing him and I'm, and I'm hearing him and I'm hearing him and, and, and he's opening up, becoming vulnerable, not many objections come. They really don't. So as soon as I tell him, hey, man, Matt, I think you should probably do this. He's like, okay, I think you're right. And all I had to do is listen to understand not to respond and dig deep to their real pain or pleasure. Only reason why people make decisions. Pain or pleasure, pain or pleasure. We are humans that are driven off of emotions. The faster I could tap in to that emotion, the faster I can get you in motion in whatever way that we need to go. The faster I could tap into your emotion, the faster I could get you into motion. So let's talk about number three, which I think all these are like number ones, right? <laughs> it's yeah. like everyone we're talking about. It should be number one. Um, three whys for every what. Three whys for every why. You, you want to touch on that there shortly, and uh, then I'll go on my rant. Yeah, so I, I think it's probably important to talk about the why behind the why, really. You know, like, why? why? And our funnel that, um, that we kind of live by is we start with why, and then we go to when, and then we go to what. So it's the three W's, and it, we work in that direction. We want to find out why are they looking? Why are they making a move? What's their situation? And then we're shooting for that time frame, and then we're going to look at their or talk about their what, because their what always changes. But um, just backing up in advance of that, I mean, the, the finding out their why is where you start building rapport. Mm -hmm. It's where you start building the relationship. And it was, I think, it was like late last year. John, you 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 know Jim Quick. I know you know yep. Ed Milet. Um, It was on a podcast. It was Ed's podcast. But Jim Quick talked about the importance of being interested in people not trying to come across as interesting and it was like whenever i heard that it was a total shift and i was like this makes perfect sense on my phone calls or even in my personal life when i'm having face-to-face -face conversations it could be with my wife kids whoever uh or a prospect internet lead that's on the phone i want to commit i want to work really hard to being interested in that person not pounding my chest as the best real estate agent in Nashville because they don't care. Mm -hmm. They want to buy They want to look at houses, you know? So I think that's why the, the why is so important. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about digging deeper with three whys deep. But um, I just, I hope that makes sense as far as like why, why the why, you know? And, and the best way to be interesting is to be interested. Um, but give you a heads up. So that quick and my let episode you guys can see it. I mean, I have, I have a few notes here. <laughs> no, we didn't even plan that. No. Like so that, that changed, <laughs> it, it, changed my, it changed my life. And I'm not joking. I'm like, I, it's, you hear people say that all the time. It really did. I mean, it really did. Just to remind myself, especially on the phones, be more interested in people versus trying to come across as interesting, you yep. know? And I think it aligns with our digging deep, you know, the three wise deep for every what. I'm going to give you guys, you know, I, I like, I like to do quote offs. That's kind of like my thing. I think um, someone said the other day, I'm like a walking quote, uh, but 
the first why is always a lie. That's super important to remember. The first why is always a lie. And here's the reasoning behind it. It's a surface why. You know, if, if you asked me what, what my why was, and I would tell you my first why, it would be uh, to provide my family uh, with wealth or, you know, my daughter, whatever it might be. But the reason why I say that is because if I go any deeper than that, it becomes real. And when it becomes real, when it becomes uh, an emotion I attach to, it's hard for me to not like it. So let me, let me give you an example. So if Matt said, hey, man, you want to lose 20 pounds. Hey, man, you want to make 100,000. You're going to have to go ahead and, and call, 200, call 200 dials every single day uh, to go ahead and have X amount of appointments to go ahead and create X amount of income. $100,000 $100, is yours if you do that. Why do you want to do that? Well, I want to do it because I want to buy a house. All right, brother, go get it. Then all of a sudden, I get lazy. Things happen. And I don't make the dials. Matt's like, hey, man, you said you wanted to buy the house. What's going on? I'm like, yeah, I know. It'll happen. It's, I don't want to attach it to, to it because I know that as a human, I probably won't take as much action as possible that I need to. So I don't want to feel that bad. The first why is always a lie because I, you don't want to feel that feeling of disappointment. Now, if he were to say, why is that important to buy a house? Well, why is that important? Because growing up, we didn't have a home that we called home. Well, why do you want one now? What's so important? Well, to provide my daughter with you know, a backyard that we can create memories in. And when I walk through the door, seeing life in a house that I know I worked hard for and created that home and that environment for my family. So now I don't make the hundred dials and he repeats that why to me, such a stronger, stronger emotion. So when someone tells you their why is to move closer to their job, that is not their why, right? It's so deep. Like, why do you want to move closer to your job? Well, I'm driving five hours, six hours, seven hours, 10 hours, you know, every single week now, man, whoa, 10 hours. Okay. How close do you want to get? I want to get to where I'm only in the car two hours every single week. Okay. So you get 10 hours back in your week. What would you do with that time? Oh, well, I'd be able to see my daughter's recitals. I'll be able to go on date nights with my wife. I'll be able to go to the gym like I want to. Okay. So right now you're not able to do that. No, like now I'm digging really deep. And all I asked him was why he wants to go ahead and get closer to work. Now, if I left it and I said, okay, closer to work, that's his why. You know, harder is going to be to close him and hold him accountable at the end when we talk about the close here shortly. So your first why is always a lie and your why should make you cry, right? Like it should be deep. It should be deep rooted, um, even if it's a momentary why, which means a very uh, short term why. And so you got to dig, guys. It is so important. Now, I understand that it's super uncomfortable. Like it is, it's abnormal for you to ask somebody true pain or pleasure questions. But that's the first step to success, right? Getting comfortable being uncomfortable. And I don't, I want you to get out of the, the Applebee's server mindset. Get out of the Applebee's server mindset. What I mean by that is, okay, how many bedroom? Three. Okay, how many bath? Two. Okay, what location? Dallas. Doing that is doing nothing. And that is exactly, exactly why most people look at real estate agents in a negative light. Because we're asking questions that have no meaning behind it. And as Matt uh, referred to before, most of the time, their what will change. You know what won't change? Their why. And that's how we're going to drive them to take action. Their what will change. You guys all have worked with somebody who said they wanted a three-bedroom, two-bath in a big yard, and you sold them a two-bedroom, two-bath in a condo with all the amenities. We've done it. Why? Because their why was, it was way different. It had nothing to do with the three bedroom, two bath. It has something to do with location maybe. So every single what, we go three whys deep. Every what, three whys deep. Do not jump off of the what until you find out if there's pain or pleasure. Um, it's some, some questions. We always get this, Matt, where it's like, you know, I just don't want to be the annoying. Why, 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 why? Um, so here are some of my questions I like to use to drive a why out of them. And then let me know if you've worked on any and, and really seen some, uh, some good results from it. So the yeah, first I'll, is, be, be, before ahead. you go, John, I just back it up to like what you said there about the, the commute to work, but like, and you said it very well. Um, I'm going to say something along the lines. Well, if you were able to get those eight hours a week back, I mean, what, what would that mean to you? Or what mm -hmm. would that mean? What would that mean for you? Well, I, I get to spend more time with my kids 
well, now we see like the importance of, of what's going on here. He's not trying to get closer to work. He's trying to spend more time with his kids, yeah. you know, and then it's digging deep from there. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that, that's, I, we get that a lot, you know, with uh, commutes and relocations and stuff's very real. Um, but that's, that's the actual why, not, not the, the, the shorter commute, you know? Yeah. So uh, it's, it's all about digging deep. And, and, it, and it brings such a different relationship with your client, oh, such a different relationship because now when you get them to home, no longer like, Oh, Matt got me closer to work. Now like, man, Matt got me 10 hours back with my family every single week. Like that's irreplaceable. That's how they're thinking of Matt. Now they're not thinking of Matt, the guy that got him closer to work. They're thinking of Matt that changed their entire lifestyle of his family, the trajectory of the future. Cause now he can spend 10 more hours, 40 hours every single month with his kids building memories, which you never would have had unless Matt truly asked the right questions to get better results. And Matt talked about one of the ways you ask why, what would that do for you? Like, what would that mean for you? And you don't ask it in, what would that do for you? You ask, like, get, put some empathy behind it, right? Like, what would that do for you? Another one is, why is that important? That's a simple one. Another one would be, um, tell me about your current situation. Tell me about your current situation. It's a very simple question, but it allows them to open up. And then after they do that, you just say, okay, and what else? If anybody has a coach here, uh, the two most powerful words in a coach's vocabulary are what else? What else? So they tell you about the situation or they tell you about what you want, whatever it might be. Okay. And Matt, what else? Because then they go to the next level. When you, once again, they're spewing all the first level stuff. And you say, okay, man, what else? Now they're going and digging a little bit deeper and getting a little bit more vulnerable. Um, a, another one. So why is that important to you? Um, you know, what would that mean? Or what would that do for you? Tell me about your current situation. What else? Um, you have any other ones, Matt, that you could think of top of your head? Well, I just don't, yeah, you know, you're going to get, or I, I would say this, you're, you're going to find yourself going to the what pretty quickly. You know, we, it all happens. It, we, we all do it. Um, by accident sometimes it's like well, well how many bedrooms or how many bathrooms just remind yourself that when they respond to that you can kind of shift that very quickly to a why mm -hmm. you know so it's it's not you know if they if they say four bedrooms well, well well if you don't mind me asking like why why are four bedrooms important you know so it's it, yeah it's it's all the same the same why questions but don't don't be afraid to you know plug them in in certain places where you you might think you're already too late you know but that's not always the case yeah and this is, this is why our script works, I think. And yeah, maybe, you know, uh, maybe somebody that's been on uh, to one of our conversion days or uses our script in chat, if you're using the script and you've been to a conversion day, let us know if you see it working. And the main thing is conversion day, right? Like if you just got the script, that's a, such a small piece to why the script works. Because I, I just, uh, you know, I want to make sure people understand there's a lot of different tech, a lot of different puzzle pieces that really make this thing work. Um, yeah, yes, script so. is, it's like, a, I'm very careful even with the word script. You know, we have one, but you'll very rarely see it go just like this, you know, it's or based on the script, but we have some phrases in there. And, and really, uh, what I think is most important is nailing that opening line. But um, yeah, the stuff that, and I think these folks get some deliverables from this, this webinar, but when you come to con, you know, Sync you Conversion Day, you, you get that stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of broken down into different phrases that we feel like you can plug into different situations. Yeah. And, and being in that environment too, right. Is, is crucial at a conversion day. So no doubt let's, let's move to, uh, can I throw a question to you really oh, quick yeah. uh, from Lisa. She's asking if you didn't ask the deep wise up front, is it too late to ask? So, um, I, what I would ask her, Lisa, um, do you mean up front, like you've already off the call with them or you're thinking of like, I'm on a call. I've kind of skipped over them. Should I go back? Cause those are two different scenarios, right? Um, so write that down there, which, you, what you're thinking, Lisa, and I'll kind of answer one right now. If you're already, um, on a call with them and you've skipped over it all, I would have a, a conversation pulse. And what I mean by that, um, is I already had to call with them. Okay. Let me just answer this part though. What I mean by that is if, do you know they're ready to close? Then go ahead and do it. Um, close them. Yeah, I mean, work on a why later. But if they're not, then you have to go back and, and, and try to get that, right? Like, what else are you going to do? Try to close them without a why when you already know they're probably not going to close. But for your situation, you just said you've had several calls with them. Go back and find it and say, hey, um, Matt, 
you know, how are things going over there, over there with you? And boom, had the conversation. Look, you know, I never really dug deep to figure out like, what's, what's the real motivation for you? So um, I would just love to know, but what's, what's so important about four bedrooms for you? And the reason why I asked Matt is because I want to make sure that you understand and you know that I truly know your situation and I understand your problem. Uh, because when I'm seeing homes, if I truly understand your problem, I might be able to find a better opportunity if I know the true reasoning behind you moving um, and what you're looking for. So uh, just take a few minutes and I'm going to put this into my system so I could see the opportunities better. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, sure. That makes sense. Cool. Okay. So the four bedrooms, we talked about that. So why is that so important to you? And just jump right into it. Does that make sense, Lisa? Does that help? Hopefully it does. Hopefully it does. You any yeah, if, if you're close, if you're close to setting the appointment, like John said, set, set the appointment might be a virtual appointment right now. Um, but yeah, get, get, get to the close, set, yeah. set the appointment. Which we will be talking about virtual appointments here shortly. So oh, yeah. no stay doubt. tuned because we're, we're going to be talking about how to actually get appointments right now um, and not push it out until, you know, who knows when. Um, any other things on, on a uh, chat, Kayla, that came up? Uh, I, one that I've seen a lot is, do you ever leave voicemails? Mm. Matthew? <laughs> not, not when I'm prospecting. If I'm, if it's a nurture, you know, if it's a follow-up, somebody I've already had a conversation with, my SOI, um, I'll, I'll leave voicemails. Sometimes I prefer to do that. Sometimes I don't even want to talk to those folks. <laughs> so, um, I mean, let's be real. But uh, when I'm prospecting, n no, no, I, no voicemails. That's a big no. Yeah. Now, I always get this question when we give that answer of when is it appropriate to leave a voicemail if I'm not doing it on those first few calls. So oh. if it's a, if it's an instance where I, maybe it's like a lifeline, you know, I've tried two, three, four times and, and not gotten then I might've even tried text and email, um, which I don't love doing either. Cause it kind of overlaps some of our automation, but um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll try a voicemail. What I mean, it's it's a lifeline at that point. Yeah, and and like Matt said, a lifeline. But you gotta look at what that means for you. Uh, if you leave your voicemail, and they do not, they do not, they do not know you. They do not think that you could add value to them. They do do not think that you have any kind of solution to their problem. Why are they gonna call you back? It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. And there's a good chance they may hit that little block button. And now what are you going to do? Now, if you were to ever leave a voicemail, I'm talking about this dude's been in the system 3,000 days, mm -hmm. whatever the case might be. I like leaving these two types of voicemails. The first one, just being like, hey, Matt, I know that uh, you're looking over something down in Main Street. Just to let you know, the house just came on the market. Um, I know the listing agent, so it's probably going to go fast. If you want to see that home, reach out to me right away, and I can go ahead and make sure that you see it before it, le before it leaves off the market. So urgency frequency and a call to action. The next one, some of you guys might think I'm crazy, but it actually works. Um, hey Matt, this is John. Uh, they say that it takes 17 calls for somebody to give uh, the other person a call back. This is call 10. Let's cut out the next seven and give me a ring back. <laughs> and it works. It, it works. Uh, now you got to have fun with it, right? You don't want to be robotic when you say it. Um, but uh, those are the only two that I'd really leave. Matt said before, though, if you know the person, like if you followed up with them, you had the relationship with them, different story. This is, I'm talking about, you've never gotten a hold of them. Myself, Matt, Kayla, and probably a lot of people that are on this call can all agree that you have closed the deal, that you never talked to them for 2,000 days, 3,000 days. And then you close them, right? And you set the appointment. What happens if you, if you actually call them and you left a voicemail and they blocked your number? You may have never gotten a hold of them within that time frame, right? So I don't know. It's, it's up in the air for a lot of people, but I don't believe in leaving voicemails. Uh, first off, not many people listen to voicemails anymore either, but definitely text, 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 but don't use text as, as a uh, substitution for calling. Text is just another way to get them on the phone. Awesome. We're caught up on good questions. Boom. Perfect. Let's go into the next one, which is objections, I believe. Correct. Absolutely. So let's, let's take some objections. Um, let's take some objections and let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is going to be the number one objection people are going to get right now, which is the coronavirus and, and you know, what's going on. That's, that's the big one right now. That's going to be 
probably the majority of things. So Matt, you've been calling a lot of people lately. Yep. You, you've been increasing your calls. Uh, you've seen success. Tell me a little bit more about what you're doing, where you're seeing success with that one objection. So for, for me, I mean, it's the first thing I had to do though, is, is really just provide my, my own self with some normalcy. And I, I love stats. So I, I mean, in looking at my MLS, there were uh, in the last two days, a couple hundred homes that closed. Uh, I think over 500 homes had listed. So that tells me that, you know, life, life is moving forward. You know, there's still, there's still business to be had. And I started thinking about that and um, I started looking at it like, well, and I've been in the seller's market for a long time now. So, I mean, I, I, I'm thinking cash buyers or buyers, is there ever been a better time, you know, in the last four or five years for, for them to get a good deal, you know? And so I was kind of spinning it that way. And, and I, again, empathy is a big one right now. So if somebody does express to me that they've got those concerns um, or they're not, they're on the fence or they're not looking right now, um, I, I will, I say, well, let's just put, put the virus aside. I mean, in, you know, in, in, in a perfect world, what are you looking for or, or why are you even looking you know, something along those lines. But uh, also another one too, right now at, with that objection is, I totally get it, John. I, there are a lot of unknowns. There, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world right now with the market and the virus and, you know, the overall economy, you know, na nationally, internationally. But let me ask you this, if, if a good deal came about, you know, in, in Nashville, um, would you want to know about it? You know, I mean, some, yeah. something just to kind of, just to get there, you know, and chances are um, they're going to say yes. You mm -hmm. know, they, they're like, well, why not? Right. W yep. Why not? And, and then so. when they say that, you just jump right into, okay, so I can make sure I, I know what you're looking for. Is it, you know, three or four bedroom. Mm -hmm. and, and I love that. It just, and it's, but the way Matt did it, he's just slowing down his pace and he's just speaking with extreme empathy um, and letting them know that they understand it. And another thing is, Hey Matt, I totally understand. Uh, but let me ask you this, which by the way, you guys hear us say that a lot as a transfer. Let me ask you this, or why don't we do this? Um, you know, are you, are you familiar, uh, with how agents actually can show you homes virtually? No, I do not. Are you familiar with, uh, you know, zoom or any kind of platform like that, that does video? Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Well, we're actually, um, that's one of the things that we're experts at is we are in this industry and actually in this market, we are the virtual showing experts or the virtual, um, you know, real estate experts, whatever you guys want to, you know, go ahead and leverage right now. So what we could do and what we've done a lot in the last few weeks is I'm not asking you to go buy a house tomorrow. That's a key phrase. I'm not asking you to go buy a house tomorrow. Um, I just want to make sure that you're working with the right person and that person has the right strategy to get you into the home that you want to fit your lifestyle and for the price that you run. Is that, does that make sense? Absolutely. So let's just do this. We'll do a virtual meeting, right? So we can go ahead and, and I can show you the strategy. Um, and then this way, if a great deal comes on the market, you can go ahead and jump all over it um, or at least have the opportunity to see it. Is that fair? That's fair. And so I'm, I'm creating, if I'm, look, if I'm you out there, I'm creating, like, and I'm slogan, I'm, I'm making sure I am in my market the virtual real estate experts. What does that mean? We have sold 500 homes virtually. We get it. We also know that sometimes to meet face to face, even when there's not a pandemic is hard. So we've created another opportunity and a solution for those people who have a busy lifestyle or 20 kids and they can't get away from them. And that's, we meet virtually. You see our strategy. You make sure you like the person you're working with during the biggest transaction of your life. You make sure the strategy makes sense. And then when the time comes, whenever that is for you, Matt, we can go ahead and take a look at that home or people that aren't, uh, aren't quarantined like that. Like out in Florida right now, we can still go do stuff. And this yeah. way, we, then if you, Matt, if you like, hey man, I love this house. What we could do is I can go and I could actually show the house or possibly get the seller to do a virtual tour for you. So you can see the home and you don't miss out. Yeah, and John, that, I know, like John, I know you were looking in, in Franklin for a long time, but things kept flying off the market pretty quickly. Um, right now, I mean, a lot of those folks that um, were in the market, I, I think that they've kind of moved back to the fence. 
um, if we can find the right place for you at, you know, kind of the right price, maybe make your money go a little bit further. Would, would you want to see it? Yeah, ideally. Okay. Well, luckily in Tennessee, they, they've called us essential employees. I can still go to work. So if you're open to do like doing like a virtual showing, I would love to, to show you that house that, that you had some interest in. Okay. But then, then what though, if I want to like purchase the home, then what do I do if I'm still in quarantine? Well, I mean, you, if, if you love it and you like it, I mean, you can make an offer and we can put it contingent upon inspection. Um, totally protected. You know, if, if something were to show up either on the inspection or you just didn't like the house. So you're, you're totally protected, free and clear. So I could close, I could do everything virtually. Uh, assuming you like the place and we get past the inspection, uh, closing is, is not a problem. We can do everything electronically. The reason why I brought that up guys, a lot of your prospects have no clue that it could all be done virtually. No clue, no idea. Time to bring a solution to the problem. I, and, and now what you should do is like, look, you know, what's funny. A lot of our clients that actually close all virtually, they had no idea. And so we've closed 500, hundred, whatever it is, or do the feel fell found, you know, Matt felt the same exact way when I talked to him a few weeks ago, but what he found what was actually a lot easier to work virtually and we're able to get him the home that he wanted. And fortunate enough, it was, it was at a better rate on a mortgage side. Um, and then on top of that, there wasn't a bidding war. So we got in to negotiate a better price. So we got a more house for less money. And in the end, um, you know, it, it worked out for everybody. So if there's something that comes on a market that you know, it seems like a good fit for you, do you want to know about it? And it's just, and don't like this, this virus is, is real. So you don't downplay it like Matt and I have talked about, but it's, it's not an objection. It's not like this. All that is, is, is it's time for you to truly start utilizing the skills like confidence, which, which I will touch on before we leave. Cause I want to talk about confidence. Cause I think that's, that's a big piece. That a lot of people are missing right now. That's the reason why we don't get on the phone. It's not that we don't want to make money. Believe me. I know you want to make money. It's that you don't have the confidence. You're scared of what's going to happen. Oh no, I'm just busy. Oh no, you're not. You're, you're not confident. You took your six uh, leads that you had and you're trying to run to the fish, finish line and three or four of them fall off. And now you're scrambling all because you have confidence of calling it every single day. We'll talk about that, but let's, is there, is there any other objections I could help with or Matt could help with? Uh, well, maybe Kaylee, you saw some. Yeah. While I look through, um, there is, so I just want to share some that Sky just shared. She said lawyers and title agents in her area just took a virtual training to be able to close any deals that need a notary. So if you're not aware of people doing that in your area, I just reach out and, you know, check to see what the process is in your area. So you can be more prepared to have that conversation with your leads. But Evelyn asked a good question about virtual appointments. So Matt, she said, um, when you do the meeting, would you do the meeting right then? Or would you book it out with all the decision makers? And when do you send a buyer rep agreement? Uh, good questions. Uh, I, 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 honestly, it's whatever's best for them. You know, if, if I can, if I can expedite that zoom meeting to the next day or a couple of days, um, I want to stay top of mind. So I want to, I want to make that happen. I want to get that on their calendar. Um, but it, it's really about kind of what's the best, best fit for them. And zoom, zoom is, or it could be new for a lot of folks. So kind of want to kind of manage that kind of cultivate that to where, um, I get the most participation, you know? So, I mean, cause if, if they just call in, well, that's really not much different than another phone call. So I, I want to stress the importance of the, uh, the face to face, yeah. but, uh, as far as the, the, the buyer rep agreement, um, historically I have done those face to face. Uh, I would prefer to have those done face to face and it all comes down to make the it's, there's a lot of why behind, behind that it's what's in it for them not for me with the ex exclusive buyer rep. A lot of agents will, will explain, well, my broker requires it. Well, actually, this is the, for their protection. This creates a fiduciary duty. Um, sometimes that can be a little challenging to you know, explain over the phone, um, but we might have to in the next few weeks. So um, more to come on that. Which is but, cool uh, because when you show them how to use Zoom, screen share, 
Hey, look, I'm yeah. going to show you my screen right now. This is going to be the agreement. Just so we'll walk over this really quick, walk through it. Then you send them, um, you know, obviously the, the, you know, uh, PDF of it or whatever that they need to, the docu sign of it. Um, but yeah, so now with, with zoom, you have opportunity to show them screen share of, of everything. And that's, that's, that's a great way to go ahead and be like, Hey, the reason why I also want you on videos, cause I want to be able to show you. Um, and I want to make sure that you're in a spot where you could actually see your phone or your computer. Um, so what's going to be the best day for you and any decision makers to jump on a 10, 15 minute zoom call. Um, so we can show you our strategy, um, and then kind of go from there. Boom. Yeah. Lisa's got a good one there. Um, for Lisa in regards to pre-approval, um, that really I'm, I'm asking converse, I mean, questions around pre-approval in the first conversation. Um, I'm going to ask, I'm going to lead with cash. I'm going to say, Hey, are you, you planning on paying cash for this place or are you going to, you know, need to finance or, or get a loan? Always lead with cash. I, I don't want to um, offend anybody by assuming that they are financing a deal. So I'm, I'm getting to that one pretty quick um, just because I, want to be respectful of my time and theirs. Something else is why not? Like, I, I don't want to send them away. I don't want to send them to a mortgage guy that maybe or may not call them, right? May not connect to them. Now, if you have one that doesn't drop the ball, 100 out of 100, you know, they're, they're good, 99 out of 100, then that's different. But a lot of lenders, sometimes it's, it's putting your money in their hands. So I would say, hey, the greatest thing also, Matt, about when we do our Zoom calls, I'll bring on the, the preferred lenders that we have or preferred lender that you have. Um, you know, I'll send you the information so that he could jump on right after we speak. Um, I'll make the introduction and then you guys could have your conversation. Is that fair? And that's that. Yeah, we're so, all, we're, we're all going to have clients, buyers right now that are on the, they're not moving off the fence. It's going to happen, you know, for the next uh, four to six weeks, probably at a minimum. Um, but that being said, no excuse for them not to get pre-approved right now. Mm -hmm. They can do on online applications from, from their couch, from their phone most of the time. So no excuse. If they're committed to buying, once they get past this, then no excuse for them not to get pre-approved right now. And some, some of them don't realize in 90 days, right? Oh, what if I get it now? Then I, I don't close for another 60 days. You know, they don't realize they have a 90 day window. Um, so it's just, guys, it's just being able to articulate the value to them and stop assuming that they know all the stuff that you know, because there's a good chance they don't. Right. I'm literally buying a house right now. I have not met one person face to face. It's been all done virtually. So yep. it's possible. Absolutely. <laughs> it feels weird, but it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> it's the new norm nowadays, though. It's the yeah. new norm. Uh, so the other objection I've seen a lot is um, an agent saying they already have an agent. I, I definitely want to touch on that one. Um, but uh, real quick, I want to answer Evelyn's question about when booking Zoom meetings, they don't show. There's, there's three reasons why they don't show. One is you haven't added enough value because you didn't ask enough why questions to get their true pain or pleasure, okay? Two, because you did not do a great job at setting up the expectation of, hey, look, can you do me a favor? If for some reason you can't make this, let me know. Or setting up the expectation of, hey, do you use a calendar? I do, perfect. I'm gonna send you this calendar invite for the Zoom. Um, if you can go ahead and just while I have you, uh, click yes for that. Um, so I can make sure they jump on it. Yeah. And then tell them, hey, about a day before or a day of, whatever it is, I'm going to send you a reminder text, phone call, or email. How would you like to be contacted so I can make sure you see it? Uh, text. Perfect. So when they send you a text, Matt, you're going to see it? Yeah, I'll see it. I'm just re I'm, all I'm trying to do is plug a little bit more buy-in from them. Um, so I'm asking, do they use a calendar? Send them a calendar invite. Asking them how, they, how they'd like to communicate. And then I'm confirming with them when I send you the thing that I need to send you to remind you, you're going to see that. Yeah, you're going to see it. Okay, perfect. Um, and then the, the last thing uh, I would talk about is, you know, on that aspect of people not showing up. Um, it's just you not setting like the clear expectations throughout the entire call. Um, and so that, that, that's something I'd work on. But if you build enough rapport with digging for the why, it's going to be hard for them not to show up because it's, it, it's a battle. Um, so I have an agent, right? That's mm -hmm. Okay. So Matt, totally understand you have an agent. Uh, let me ask you this. If there were some off market properties that came on that didn't hit the MLS, would you want to hear about them? Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. So um, I don't want to say you things that don't really make sense. I'm sure you probably get a bunch of useless emails like I do anyway. Uh, well, what are you looking for? Like a, a three or four bedroom? Uh, four bedroom. 
Four. Okay. Interesting. Why four bedrooms? Uh, I work from home, so I need a home office. You work from home? Okay. What do you do for a living? I'm in real estate. You're in real estate. Ah, <laughs> oh, nice. Com commercial. Commercial. That's where the money is, right? Is no, it is? takes takes too long to get paid. Okay. Um. So so tell me about your current situation. Uh, three bedroom, two bath, townhome. Three bedroom, two bath, townhome. So do you have a current office right now in, in your in your townhome? No, that's why I need to move. Man. Okay, I'm stopping right there. But what did I do? I still stayed on the office because that's what he talked about, right? He, he, I heard the bait bomb and I told, said, hey, what's your current situation? I'm waiting for him to dig into his why and I'm starting to hear it. He has no office now, right? He wants to get into a, a house. He's in a condo or a townhome now. We're going to dig deep into why now do you want a house versus a, a townhome? And so I have an agent. I know that was the, the objection there. And it's simple. It's just, hey, is there there's something off market, you know, that really aligned with what you wanted. I checked off all the boxes. Would you want me to send that to you? Yeah. The biggest, the biggest takeaway there, John is, is you completely just moved past it. You got past it because it, it still kind of doesn't matter. You know um, I have found in the past when I spend too much time on it, when I'm like, well, who's the agent or, you know, have you signed anything or anything along those lines? You know, it, it just, it takes me down the wrong path. So, Great. I mean, I, I, I love when somebody says they have an agent, I'm like, that's, that's perfect. You mind telling me a little bit more about your situation? Mm -hmm. I just go right. I mean, I'm moving right past it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I used to, and I think we all used to talk about me like even like a year ago, we'd be like, okay, you decided to buy your agency agreement. You know, what's your agent's name? And now it's just like simple. It's just like, okay, off market properties. Want to hear about it? Yes. No. Yes. Perfect. Tell me about your situation. That's it. That's my intro to get back into it. So I'm not ignoring it. Um, and I'm trying to bring value and the value is off market properties. That's my value add. Uh, but in the end, it's going to be way deeper than that by the end of the conversation. What else we got, Kayla? That's really all for the objections. Um, I haven't really heard m m many others uh, in the chat. Yeah, those uh, are does good. anybody have any other ones before we move on to number five that we wanted to touch on? Yeah, chat them in and, and I'll relay them to the guys. Perfect. I know we're trying to get within like a 90 minute time frame from start to finish here. Um, well, there is a question. Do you mean actual off market properties or would you still send them MLS listings? Both. Like, you know, I mean, there's actual off market, but I'm also going to send them. Uh, in the end, what's going to happen is I'm setting the appointment. I'm still not shying away from the appointment. When I, after everything's all said and done, I'm like, okay, hey, um, I'll definitely send these over to you. Let me ask you this. Um, you know, would you be interested in, in having a quick virtual meeting um, so you can hear what our strategy is and if it makes sense? And then when I get on a face-to-face, -face, I just got to ask you real quick, Matt, did you sign any kind of buyer agency agreement? I do not want to step on anybody's toes. Yes, I did. Okay. Look, if for some reason they dropped the ball on you where, um, I would just hope that, uh, you know, you would, you would think about us um, for buying your next home. That's it. Like I want to add as much value as possible. So as soon as they drop the ball, cause you know, they probably will. As soon as they drop the ball, they're thinking about John and thinking about John and thinking about Matt, whatever it is. And so I'm just always pushing for that appointment. So how do you guys deal with people who are truly saying, Hey, I'm not interested in buying or selling. I just want to see what my home is worth. Or I just want to see what like my neighbor's home is worth. Matt, you want to take it? Then I can go if you need it. Yes. So, so it's an instance maybe where they're looking for like a home evaluation, Kayla. Yeah. I'm really just curious right now. I'm not trying to make a move anytime soon. Oh, okay. Um, well, it's a, it's a good time to check, you know, um, I mean, the market is, I mean, barring the current situation aside, but it's a, it's a great time to, to kind of get an idea on that. And I have found that we do have a home evaluation tool. I'd be happy to send that over to you to kind of give you a ballpark idea of what your home is worth. But I have found that uh, in most instances, um, I give my best valuation when I, when I see the home in person. Uh, would that be something that interests you? You know, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I, I understand that, um, that it's kind of like the just browsing or just looking. Um, I also too, I want to find out a little bit more, you know, about like, why, why are you, you know, why are you looking or why are you interesting to see what your home is worth? Or actually tell me a little bit more about your house. So it's, we, we get the question, John might agree with this. We get the question a lot too, like, what's your script for sellers? 
well, the seller script's really not any different. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still, we're, we're still just trying to dig deep, find out their why. Why did you come on my website? Why did you plug your address in? Yeah, and I, I would ask him two questions here. I'd say, uh, no, totally get it. Uh, let me ask you first off, how long have you lived in your current home? Just find out. I lived here for three months. Get a little gauge. I lived here for four years, three or whatever the case is. Get a gauge. All right. And um, did you get an email with the home evaluation? Yeah, I did. Okay. What did you think? It sucked. Because da, 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 they're probably going to say it sucked, right? And you said, look, I, <laughs> I completely get it. Uh, unfortunately, any kind of home valuation that you do online, they don't take into consideration all the amazing updates you might have done, all the things that are truly going on in the market, the other houses around you. So it's really hard to get a true gauge. Um, so what we do is we just want to make sure that you, whenever time is right, have the best understanding of what your home is worth um, and what you could do to actually increase value. And a lot of times people uh, think it's a lot more they need to do versus what they truly need to do. Um, so what we do is we offer a free home evaluation. Uh, we're just going to come in and, and take a look around, look at the comparables. And we obviously know the market way better than the computer does. Um, and we'll leave you with the best value. And if there's anything that you could change to increase the value tremendously, we'll let you know that as well. How does that sound? And then, and what uh, Steve Murray always says, Hey, if I ask you to list, you could ask me to leave. That's it. Right. And just, just coming in and I'm going to add a value, 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 value. They're going to love me hopefully. And then we could discuss the actual listing opportunity. Mm -hmm. So we had someone say, you know, right now I, we have to stay home unless it's essential. So I couldn't go look at the property. You're not necessarily trying to set it up to go right now. You could be setting something up for the future, right? Yeah. But, and, and like Matt has even said, like right now, real estate's essential um, in some markets. So find out first, don't mm -hmm. create an objection and an obstacle that's not even there. We already have too many of those, right? So yeah. um, find out first. Now, and if that is the truth, you go two ways with that. One is how motivated is a seller? If they see something they love, is a motivated seller going to just do a quick little virtual tour? Possibly. We don't know what we don't know, right? If you don't ask, the answer is always no. Um, and so that's one way. And the other one, like Kayla said, I just want to build massive rapport. I just want to build so much rapport. So whether the, list, or whether the seller can do it or not, whether I can go look at it or not, I want to meet them face to face virtually so I could build an extreme amount of rapport. So when the floodgates open and we could finally go look at homes, I have like a stack of people that I'm working with, right? Like I'm, I'm making a hundred thousand dollars just in like two months, like type of money, right? Like whatever that is for you. But I just want to make sure people understand that we're still virtual appointments, whether you can go sit, check out the home or not, whether uh, the listing uh, the person that, that who's listing it is, is willing to do a, a virtual tour. I don't care about any of that stuff because those things, once again, what are they? Out of my control, right? Those are circumstances that I cannot control. That's uncertainty that I cannot focus on. What I can focus on and what I can create certainty in is creating massive rapport with the person that it took me already 500 days to get in touch with and they finally picked up. Like, I'm taking advantage of this. Think about this when you guys call and talk to somebody. This may be, and you know what? Screw it. This is the only time I get the chance to talk to this person. And if you thought that way, would you do things differently? Would you push a little bit more? Would you show some more empathy? Would you do whatever it takes um, in the obviously good standard way, right? Like not being forceful, but would you do things differently? Because I think you would. I think if you knew this is the only time you're going to talk to this person, you'd push a little bit more to get the appointment. Awesome. I love that. So I have an anecdote from Sky and then a couple other objections. Um, so Sky, this is just too good to pass up. Um, she said, I had a sync lead that said she had her, an agent already and was buying with her husband and gave me the agent's name, but I kept up by drip over the course of a year and she called me and referred me to someone else and she ended up divorced and buying with Sky. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's my girl, Sky. So it was the Never. long game. Shout out Never give Sky. up. Shout situations we talk about it all the time situations change right mm -hmm. S situations change so yeah that's why i don't spend a lot of time even talking about them having an agent it's important for me to like know about their situation update their search and stay in front of them remain relevant for the next however long you know until they buy or they get divorced you know so um we got to be able to add some value along the way yeah, yeah.
So Nathan had a good one. I only want to talk to the listing agent. Do you want me to handle that one? Uh, Nathan, all, all I'll say is, is I, I don't know if you realize this, but that agent's fiduciary duty is to the seller. So keep that in mind when it comes to negotiations, when it comes to the inspection, when it comes to the appraisal, all of these things that go on over the course of that transaction, um, that agent, I know you might think you're going to get a better deal, but it's not always the case. Just be mindful that that agent's fiduciary duty is to the seller. Let me put it this way. If my wife and I were ever going to get a divorce, do you think we would use the same attorney? The answer is no. So just, just keep that in mind. So exactly what Matt said, but I would flip it. I would ask the questions. Hey, Matt, look, totally understand you want to use a listing agent. Uh, let me ask you this. If, God forbid you and your partner got divorced. Would you use your partner's divorce attorney? No, probably not. Okay, why not? Well, because obviously, you know, it's going to, my partner's best interest in the hand is going to be with that lawyer. And they're going to work for my partner versus me. Exactly. So what most people think is that they go straight to the listing agent, uh, they can get a better deal. But what we have found is that you're paying 3% more of the listing price because like you said, that agent's duty is that their obligation is to get the most for their seller, for their actual client. So you're going to pay 3% more, more than likely what we see in our market. Um, and so I just wanted you to be aware of that. Most people don't understand and, and, and uh, are aware of that, which is completely understandable, right? It's not put out there. Uh, so let me ask you this. Uh, what do you love about that house? Oh, I love that it had four bedrooms. Interesting. Okay. Why did you love it had four bedrooms? There's a lot of houses with four bedrooms. What, what was so interesting about that? And I'm just diving right in. So exactly what Matt did, but I'm asking those really awkward questions. Like when, when I do my analogies, it's so like – stupid for me to ask, why would you not use, you know, your wife's uh, attorney, divorce attorney, but it's what <laughs> I need to ask because the person doing the telling is the person doing the selling. So I want them to tell me, no, I would not use them because of this. Right. And then I come in, like Matt said, swoop in and then kick them with the, how much actually they're probably going to pay more. Um, and so exactly what Matt did, I would just ask a little, a few questions, but it's the same concept for sure. Yeah, that's no, that's it. I mean, the script, the script never changes. You were just trying to find out a little bit more about his why. Yep. Absolutely. We had another one, Kayla. Um, the other ones were kind of just really, um, no, I'm just looking. Oh, that's, I mean, that's that we covered that in the opening line, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Exactly what the site is for. Tell me what's prompting you to browse. Why are you browsing? So just looking is no longer an objection anymore because you gave him that objection in the first you know, eight seconds. Mm -hmm. All right, let's jump to number five. You guys ready for number five? This is the, the, the last one of top five things to increase your conversion, even though we probably could add like 18 more. Um, <laughs> what is your number five, Matt? Uh, we got to ask for the clothes, right? Got to ask for the business. Let's not forget about why we're on the phone, which is, it's crazy to me because you know, I, I've helped build ISA companies and I remember walking through ISA uh, companies that before, you know, we built that one and I just, it, it boggled my mind how many great conversations people had, but they forgot to ask for the appointment. They forgot to ask. And it comes down to a lot of reasons. And what I have found is the best close is simple and it goes something like this. And then Matt, I want you to chime in kind of what you've been using here recently. Um, after everything, if they still say, no, John, I still want to wait. You say, no, Matt, you still want to wait. I totally get it. But if I were to find you that four bedroom, two bath house in downtown Dallas, that got you 10 hours back in your week so that you can go ahead and actually build those memories with your kids, see your daughter's dance recitals, eat breakfast with your daughter before you go to work, would you consider moving sooner? So I asked them, totally agree. No, if you want to wait, that's fine. But if I were to find you that four bedroom, two bath house, what, what, what location, Dallas. But then I bring in a why, right? I'm starting to paint that picture so I can get you 10 hours back in your week. So you can finally go to your daughter's dance recitals and, and you could 
eat breakfast with your daughter like you said you wanted to and create those memories. And I pause, pause. Would you consider moving sooner? And that only works if you get three whys deep. Because if I'm like, if I got you 10 hours back in your week, would you consider moving sooner? Mm, probably not. Right? You, you want to paint the picture and you want to, some people uh, you know, don't agree when I say this, but if you see the wound, you want to take the, the knife and you want to dig in it. I'm doing it to help them. I'm doing it to help them because I'm trying to get them out of their own way. We get in our own way with everything in life. I'm trying to help them get out of their own way. And it's your job to hold them accountable to it, but you, it's not as powerful if you don't know the why. What do you think on that, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'm with you. I mean, we, we've got to, I think when we get to the end, that's our opportunity to kind of uh, relay back to them or repeat back to them what's important to them, what they're looking for. It, um, it just enhances our credibility, makes them think that we were listening to them, that we care. Um, and then I'm going to ask them, like, what, what, what are our next steps? I mean, what, what are the next best steps for, for you and I, you know, in this process? Um, mornings or afternoons, you know, could we meet today? Could we meet tomorrow or this week? Um, we've got to get more comfortable and you're going to talk about it, I'm sure, but more confident in asking for the close, you know, and, and asking for the appointment. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at with that. You know, closing, we've been told all our life that there's so many techniques from closing. You know, there's a reverse close, there's a reverse negative close, there's a assumptive close, there's a takeaway close. I can give you a hundred different types of closes, but closing is not a technique. Closing is an attitude. Closing is a confidence and you have to build it. And, and that's the cool thing about confidence, guys. Confidence is a skill. Like it's a skill, which means you could build it. I would say like, if you build it, they will close, right? Like <laughs> if you build that confidence skill, you're going to close more people. You're going to close. And, and how do you build more confidence? You role play, right? You, you, you continually master your craft. You continually get better every single day. 1% better every day. 1% better every day. And you're riding such a high confidence because if you gave me, let's just say Kayla didn't have that much confidence, but her skill set was whoo, through the roof. Matt came to me. He had a crazy amount of, of confidence, but not the best skill set. Matt's going to set more appointments than her. It's just the way it works. It's the way it works. Confidence will override skill set. Now, you need both. Don't get me wrong. You need both, but you need to drive your confidence skill to a new level. We, it's, you know, people say, man, John, you're up there and you're, and you're talking, you know, you're doing conversion day. You're just so confident. How, how'd you, you know, yeah, but I, you know, how, how, do you, how do you do that? Well, I work on it. I work on it. You know, Trent Shelton is going to be at our summit. He showed me his first video ever. Uh, now, those who don't know Trent Shelton, uh, he's a former football player. He also gets like, I don't know, 15, 20 million views per uh, video, every single video he posts on, on Instagram and social media everywhere. And so he showed me the video and it was horrible. And he's like, I had to start somewhere. I just worked on it every day, every day. Now look at his videos. Like it's probably the best uh, video creator out there as far as the confidence that comes across his message. Your clients can feel when you're not confident. They can. So you have to build it. And, and, and if you want to increase your pay, increase your role play. If you want to increase your pay, increase your role play. You have always, always telling me that you guys want to increase your conversion but you're not willing to role play five days a week. Not going to happen. You, 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 you want to make more money. So you can create these experiences for your family, but you're not willing to put in 15, 20 minutes a day into mastering your craft because it's awkward. Right? Cause it's uncomfortable. I don't have time. I promise every single person on here has enough time. You're just not using your time wisely. I know it's uncomfortable. I know it's awkward. It's supposed to be. So you're not getting away from that. You got to fall in love with the process and do it. I promise you guys, like the script that Matt and I have talked to you about today and, and that we've established over this, all this time, the reason why we get 33% conversion rate on our conversion days, because we take opening lines, role play for a half hour, objections, role play for a half hour, closing, role play for a half hour. Then we role play, bring some people up and role play together. Then we get on dials. So increase your role play to increase your confidence. And then role play before you actually get on the dials too. Like that's the best time to role play. Um, and then 
the opening line, Matt talked about how important it is. This is what I would do is if I was everybody on this call. I would master that opening line within the next 10 days. And the way to do that is find a role play partner and I would role play the opening line and like asking the why questions, right? The three whys deep. I would do that 20 minutes a day, minimum. Matt, me and you role play 20 minutes a day every morning before we jump on our dials. We're just doing opening lines. We're doing the first six minutes of our call, opening lines, finding the why, opening lines, finding the why. Your go, your go, your go, my go, your go. And and challenge each other, challenge each other. Yeah, Yeah. challenge each other, make it hard, hold each other accountable. Otherwise, you will never get better. If you're bench pressing, if you're bench pressing 200 and you're not trying to go higher, you'll never be stronger, you know? So you gotta, you gotta challenge yourself. Hey, the gym is closed right now. You just kind of like struck a chord. Well, struck a chord. I gotta go. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's that, that. That's you know, with with closing must come confidence, right? It, it's gonna be hard for you to close the deals, um, and just and, and time. We talked about it before. Time is it, it, it's it's a tremendous asset to us but it's not on how you look at time or what you think about time it's how you participate and engage in it so use it wisely use it wisely like when this all ends you should have sharpened your axe like so much that when you get into a group setting they're like who is this new beast who is this new creature because this dude right here this girl right here i've never heard anybody overcome objections like this person what did you do I put the time in, I role played, I worked, I grinded while you were sitting there in your pajamas watching Netflix. I was in there, I was working and guess That's what? Right. Sorry, but we work out of a pond. So good luck because I'm going fishing. Bam. <laughs> Start dialing. Yeah. Like we got what? Tornadoes, hurricanes, <laughs> epidemics. God. This stuff happens and we're going to get through it. We are going to get through it. But what are you going to look like when you come out on the other side? You are, are you taking that time to sharpen your ax right now and talk to as many people as you can build relationships or are you paralyzed and in fear like everybody else, you know? So I, I choose to be the opposite of that. Yeah. Yeah. Walking in that faith. Uh, what I'd like to see right now, we've had a 90 minutes basically of, of this conversion call. Uh, don't jump off yet because what we love to do is kind of see what your takeaways are. Uh, it, it helps us. Um, really work on them, see where maybe we missed uh, some certain things. But in, in the chat, if you guys don't mind, uh, write some of your takeaways uh, from the last 90 minutes, some things that you're going to take into uh, your, your, your day, your week, your life, and just really be better today than you were yesterday. Um, I, I love to see them. Um, and it just, it just helps us kind of see you know, all the things that are, are uh, being taken in, soaked in, and, and really heard. Now, John, while people are starting to put those in, can I hit you with a question we got? Let's go. So I have some leads that have been on for months, even years. They have actively searched 600 to 800 or more properties. They log on regularly. I always try to call them when they're on, but they won't pick up. I see they open emails, but they won't answer the phone. I want to almost threaten to unsubscribe them, but that serves no purpose. How can I compel them to answer? (laughs) Matt, you want me to answer this or you want to? Well, uh, from a system standpoint, it's a great question. One thing that I will do, and because I have those same challenges, um, I will typically, it's a mindset shift, not spend a ton of time on them because I they keep trying and trying and trying. There's really nothing you can do. Um, you can get creative with some different texts and emails and things like that. Maybe even that good voicemail that John talked, but um, I will look at in the system, speaking in terms of the system, I will look at their property views. So click on that little eyeball and look at what they're looking at and make sure that the homes, because the let's talk about how you know um, powerful the property alerts are. Make sure what you're sending them are what, what they're looking at. Mm. And who knows, you know, things could change or you, you might be in a situation where you can't help them. They may reach out to you. You never, never know. And I, I love that because it's, you're right. I mean, you just got to find another way. Change your strategy to change your results, right? Sometimes we got to change our strategy, to change our results. So Kayla, so she said um, that it was 800 to 900 days in the system. Well, they've looked at almost that many properties. Okay. How long they've been in the system for? I mean, right. So that's one thing I'd look at. Maybe they're in the system for two months, but they just been like looking nonstop. 
Okay. Yes, you said months or years. Yeah, it's funny. I've we've we've got the same situation, but at on the flip side, we sell houses to people that have been in there for three thousand days. Yep. So yeah, I mean it's you, you don't know where they're at in the process. Um, has she tried yeah. texting? Did you say that? Was was there texting involved? Where have you been texting? Let's see. And yeah, definitely answer that because only, only drip. Yeah, girl. Shoot that text message. Shoot that video text. What are you doing? Yeah, if you're not using that new sync video text and email yeah. to try to get them now, that's a missed opportunity. Yeah, let's go. And then look, a really good if they don't even answer your text, uh, probably about a uh, 45 hour later, just go ahead and write, let me know, dot, dot, dot. Right. Let me know dot, dot, dot. Um, and most of the time they will reach back out to you and just keep going. Keep plugging away. Keep plugging away. Call from a different number, whatever it is. <laughs> Stalk them on Facebook, <laughs> whatever it takes, whatever um, it takes. You know, it just, it just, you, you got to stay persistent. My biggest paychecks always came after the words. Thank you for being so persistent. I just been busy, man. I'm sorry. Like, Every time, I'm sure a lot of people on this call could even say the same for them, right? Like some of your biggest paychecks came off of being persistent and I'm persistent throughout the call. I'm persistent when I can't get in touch with them. We create greatness from being persistent. Think about that. We don't ever create greatness from everything always working. We don't ever create greatness in a life we want from, uh, you know, getting it right the first time. It's like we create greatness in a life we want through massive perseverance. Um, what I'd like to do too, uh, Kayla, is if anybody that's still on here, we've got a bunch of people still on here, um, share out your biggest takeaway. We might flood our, our sync Facebook, but on the sync Facebook, because I think more people need to get on these. I mean, we, we had a ton of people on, which I'm so proud of everybody being on these calls. First of all, like so grateful you guys taking the time uh, to sit with, with myself, Matt and Kayla, uh, like from the bottom of our hearts, really, really grateful. Uh, but maybe if you could put the, the link down there, for them to put on the, uh, the sync Facebook group of like po some positive things, some positive takeaways. Look at a time like this, we all need to uplift each other. In a time like this, we all need to add value to each other. Um, and, and I think a good way to do it is saying, Hey, we're just on the conversion call. And, um, you know, that open in line, I cannot wait to use it. Hey, that, uh, one thing Matt said, I cannot wait to utilize it, whatever it is. Uh, please just put it onto the Facebook group. Let people know that there is, there's a group of people that are still pushing, still have the foot on the gas pedal. We are not retreating. We are walking in faith. We're not running away in fear. Um, and by you putting all that stuff on there, you're going to get people who be like, oh, wait, maybe I need to change my mindset and get on one of those calls. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what it's all about, right? That ripple effect. There's so think, many amazing takeaways in the chat right now too. Awesome. And, and, and think about this. If you post, post like one thing that your, was your takeaway, and somebody else sees that and they jump on a call next week and then they get a takeaway and they create massive income, impact, whatever it is. And then their family's life has changed forever. Think about what you just did by posting something on Facebook. Somebody saw it and they started coming onto these calls. Then their life changed. You just changed a whole family's future. I mean, to me, that's what it's all about. It's like that ripple effect. You know, people are like, how many lives do you want to change? And I'm like, I, you can never put a number on like how many you'd like to, to touch because if hopefully I change some lives today, hopefully Matt changed some lives today. I know sync changes lives every single day, but it's not that one person's life who owns the platform. It's everybody that's around that person. It's the future of that family. It's the employees, it's the clients. Um, so that's why I ask everybody if you could put it on a Facebook too, that'd be great. Uh, the sync agent group or the sync uh, mastermind group. Uh, did you see any come in that you want to talk about, Kayla? And they're, they're flying in. Well, I've seen some people say that they didn't know that Sync had video text and email yet. So that's going to be a big takeaway for a lot of people. Uh, we do have it. Call in to support. They can help you get it turned on. So many people saying the opening line clarification. I mean, that's pro easily like 50% is I think people needed help with opening line and they've gotten a lot of clarity on that. Um, one of my favorite ones is, only pay attention to what you can control. Yeah. I see that you know, the, a lot. The, the, the more we worry about things that are, are outside of our control, the less we can work on us. And our business cannot expand past our own identity. So we have to truly work on us on a daily basis. And what you're doing today in the last 90 minutes is you worked on you. Like you sacrificed the, next, the last 90 minutes uh, to gain 
knowledge to create action that creates wisdom to change your family's lives. So we appreciate you guys. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other one too, is just, um, asking why instead of what. And remember guys, ask what to get to the whys, mm -hmm. right? Like off of every what there's three whys. Um, but I, you know, I, I just, play. yeah, increase People your, they're going to role play. <laughs> yes. If you want to increase your pay, increase your role play. Um, we're, we're about wrapped up here. Do you guys have any, uh, last, last words? Uh, yeah, I'll my, uh, oh, go ahead, Gail. I'm sorry. I'm uh, just a housekeeping thing. I don't want to end with housekeeping. Uh, <laughs> if you are here today, you will get a recording of this as soon as it's processing, but zoom is so overloaded with everyone working virtually that it's taking a little bit longer than normal, but please rest assured, we will send this out. You're also going to get a survey, uh, letting you know, are asking you how you felt about today and what you want to know later uh, for next ones. Um, and it'll have a link in there with deliverables. It'll have a written version of the script and some other little things to keep you going even after the call. So just be on the lookout for that in your email. And thank you. Like John said, we really appreciate all of you guys. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Matthew. Yeah. So I, I uh, just want to leave with this. I looked at uh, my site logins last Monday through Wednesday. Um, and I compared them to this, this week, Monday through Wednesday, we all know the world looks a lot different um, in that week's time. And my site logins this week are up 40%. So people are at home. Uh, people are still looking at homes and they're, they're humans, they're people. So let's call them and help them. Yeah, they're not leads, they're people. Right? That's right. That's right. And I'll leave you guys with, with something as simple as this. First off, thank you so much, Matt. Thank you so much, Kayla, for, for jumping on here. Uh, and Kayla being an amazing moderator and just <laughs> seeing all the things that are coming up because my eyes trying to, you know, trying to speak and then see what's going on. Man, that's, that's definitely would have been hard. Uh, and Matt, I appreciate you, man, taking the time away from your business and your family to jump on here and add value to every single person on here, including myself. Um, but everybody that's, that's still on here, I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, you know, we're super grateful that you guys are, are continually pushing. You're continually going. Uh, you're, you're, you're not giving up. I'm a big believer in this whole wolf pack mentality. Um, and this wolf pack mentality I talk about, people don't realize that wolves are on the very top of the food chain. Um, and, and the great things about wolves are that they don't quit, right? They, 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 they create a new strategy if something's not working. Uh, they, they have this unity of this family within their wolf pack. Um, they could take down almost any animal because, because of that unity. Um, and they, they, they persevere. Right. And, and so everything you guys are doing is, is, you know, really aligning with, with the wolf pack that I'm going to align myself with. So I appreciate everybody on here. Um, time to, to, to not sit back and relax time to go ahead and put the foot on the gas pedal. You got time now. It's how you engage and how you participate in it. You could adapt right now and innovate and create more income than you ever created before. Because a lot of people in 2008, they actually got rich. And they got rich because they weren't the ones selling all the stocks and running for the hills. They were the ones that were bought in and saying, I'm in this for the long run. All this is is an obstacle, guys. It's just an obstacle like everything else in our life. But there's so much opportunity in it. And as we stated before, the circumstances that are happening are out of our control. So choose not to control the circumstances, but choose to control the thoughts and a perspective of how you look at those circumstances, which will indirectly shape your entire life. Appreciate you guys so much. Um, you guys are amazing people for, for taking the time out and listening to me rant and, and Matt with his amazing radio voice. I need a <laughs> voice, uh, but I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Um, and we will see you guys. Oh, wait, can, can we talk about real quick? Can we talk about the next... Like what we're going, what's going on in April? Do we know what's going on? Kayla? Ooh, you got to announce? No, wait. How about this? Stay tuned. Make sure you open up your emails from sync. There might be something happening. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, guys. Once again, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Go crush it. Take the tools. Implement. Um, if you need us, you know where to find us. Thank you, guys. See you, guys.